Welcome to another episode of Pop Culture Rant TV. What's going on, family? What's going on, all you beautiful motherfuckers out there? How are we all feeling today? Good? Today, right. we are going to discuss what has transpired. We're going to tra transpire my ass. We're going to sit here and fucking talk about what the fuck happened on fucking Roast and Review. When they had both fucking Mr. Upchurch and Mr. Screwface on the, to fucking sit here and talk about what happened, what occurred, and their fucking issues and their problems, whatever it may be. That's what the fuck we talking about today. Go ahead. <laughs> and, I, I, and I'll actually say his name in this video. Screw. Because after I watched this interview, there was a lot of things that got brought to light on, uh, on Screw's end and uh, on uh, Church's end. Uh, if you guys watch the Roast and Review interview, you'll possibly understand what, what I'm talking about. How Screw misunderstood what Upchurch said in, the, in that very first Roast and Review interview. First things first, okay? They got to an understanding. Yes, Mr. they did. Uh, Mr. Church and Mr. Screwface got to an understanding way at the end, possibly like the last 20 minutes. I, I'll sit here and figure out a way to put it in the fucking video, okay? But I have lost all goddamn fucking respect for Mr. Fucking Roasting Review over here. And I'm going to tell you why, all right? You invite these two men onto your fucking channel for an interview to hash out whatever nonsense they're fucking going through, right? Okay, whatever commendable. At what point were you going to fucking moderate the conversation or even mediate it? Because it just sounds like Screw is fucking talking the entire motherfucking time with fucking Roast fucking on his fucking side. Every five fucking side. Oh, no, the church. You got to sit here and see where he's coming from. You got to sit here and see. How about you see where the man's fucking coming from fucking first before you start taking sides, motherfucker? All right. And yes, I am talking. Not him. Me. I'm fucking talking directly to you both motherfuckers. Shit fucking show fucking job. You two should be fucking ashamed of yourselves because you sit here and claim to be friends with Mr. Upchurch over here who's a stand-up fucking guy and you didn't let the man fucking sit here and speak one fucking minute the entire fucking time. What kind of shit was that? And he's sitting there taking the time out of his fucking day to come on to your fucking bullshit-ass fucking show. Not only did he take the time out of his... Fuck y'all! Y'all got me fucking pissed off now. Not only did he take the time out of his day to go on your show and do this interview with Screw, but Church came prepared. He had a notebook full of shit that he wanted to discuss and talk about. He, You see the notebook, I'm a, again, I'm going to find the fucking image. You see the notebook ready, and he's got things that he wants to talk about. Topics he wants to fucking sit here and say. Bullet points he wants to fucking bring up. And you know what? That's what you do in a fucking interview. You sit here and you bring up topics, you bring up bullet points, you bring up facts. Right. Where did that come into this fucking interview? At first in, in the interview, it was just a, a back and forth between Church and Screw arguing. But wait, then, wait, wait, one fucking side over talking the other. Right, and just, down the line in, in the interview, if anybody watched the entire thing, I did even, I understand if you didn't, it was a three hour in, you know, which only it, 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 you can skip the first fucking hour because it's entirely fucking useless fucking crap. Uh, you can skip that whole fucking first fucking hour. Go to about an hour into it, and like an hour eighteen minutes is when the actual interview fucking starts. And even then, you can skip that whole fucking second fucking hour too while you're fucking at it because that's just fucking screw fucking yelling at fucking church. Oh, I grew up around people like you, so you're racist by racist association because of your fucking skin color. Let's not get to that point yet. There's a lot of there, there's a lot. Fucking I true though. I get it, but there's a lot of points that we got to address. All right, as yeah, well. all right, all right, yeah, right. Go ahead. When Church was talking to Screw, he was being very sincere and he was being very serious. Okay. Saying that if Screw has talent, the kid is talented. You are. Screw, you are talented. You, I see that you are. I believe that you have what it takes to be at the top. Okay. You have to push yourself to do that. And, uh, and Church stated that, you know, he uh, screw. Uh, he feels like Screw gets uh, 
side uh, blindsided by the people that come at him with the rap battles. Screw. Right. So, screw. But if you're in the rap battle industry, you should expect this. But Screw stated I mean, that. Obviously, you can't prepare for everything. But so. Screw stated that he, you know, he's not really the you rap battle. Uh, I would I wouldn't say type screw don't don't fucking take that person I'm just trying to forget uh, the proper word to but that's what you said though you said he's a battle rapper yes well that's because people will come at him with rap battles and then, uh, obviously he will respond with another rap battle you know and constantly back and forth and back and forth and back and forth but screw does have original songs that he has put out but we're not talking about the man's original songs we're, we're going about what happened with this. Well, the whole the whole thing was was that Church was being very sincere about this whole thing. Mm -hmm. That he feels that Screw has the potential okay. to be at the level where Church is. It's just that he has to detach himself from uh, the 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 rap battle aspect and just be the artist. Just be an artist with your originals or covers or whatever you want to do. Church sees that. He was very sincere. He was being very serious about that. Okay. So, Screw didn't take it as a bad. He, he didn't. He didn't take it in a bad way. I, you know, uh, I, 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 I watched the expressions on on his face. He was taking it in. He was actually listening, so, and and I think that he's gonna take that to heart and hopefully uh, progress from this. Well, I I hope, Mister Screwface, if you are watching this, the man gave you some advice take the advice that, that that's that's like the master giving you know advice to you know the the, the subjects or, or the people or the followers whatever you fuck you want to call he's giving you some advice don't take it to heart you know take that and learn from it right okay I, i'm not meaning no disrespect by it but go ahead now before <laughs> i before i watched this interview i had a very different opinion about screw very, very different. I didn't. But go ahead. Um, my my opinion before watching this interview was that now that now I don't know him personally. Neither do you. No. We, we don't know him personally. Then again, we don't know Mr. Church. Yeah, we don't know either. Church personally. But uh, judging by um, Screw's first diss track to Church, okay, it was a Sunday school, bringing in race and everything like that. During the interview, it got cleared up. You know, Screw went in in-depth. The man sat here and said, I grew up around people like you. Right. And you are a representation of those people, and they were racist, so you must be racist because, too. Because of uh, the skin color on... How fucking bullshit does that fucking sound? That's a generalization cop-out... As far as anybody can fucking tell, oh, you're racist because of racist fucking reasons, because of fucking race, because you're the fucking color of your skin. You fought for fucking years. Black people fought for fucking years because of that same sentimental fucking value. Mm -hmm. Where white people were looking at black people, oh, well, you're unintelligent. Your entire race is unintelligent. This shit and that shit, whatever it may be, you know better than animals. And you know what? They were fucking wrong for it. But you can't generalize everybody because of that. Oh, this person looks like you, so I'm going to generalize and put you in the same fucking boat that they're fucking in. You look like an ass fucking hole for doing that shit. No, I 100% I, I agree. Um, a lot of things got cleared up in, in that interview. A lot of things. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, grant, grant, I apologize. Granted, he did sit here and say you yourself may not be racist, but... Right. You know, you remind me of those racist people. Right. Is and, what I got from that. And Screw kept bringing up the point. If, if you people out there watch this video and you, you're going to know. Uh, and and it also, if you've been following Church for, for a couple of years now, you know and probably seen this video out there on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. You maybe seen it. Him and Adam Calhoun made a funny video. Uh, <laughs> making fun of this chick. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That I, believes that she's black. That that believes that she's black, and she used a racial slur or a racial epithet to sit here and say that she'll see you people at the party, 
but insert racial epithet inside that fucking thing and replace you people with racial epithet. We ain't gonna say that. Okay? So, to my understanding now, he claimed that Mr. Church was racist because of that? He... Uh, he claimed that Church was not, not not necessarily racist, but he used a racist uh, term. Not not okay with with uh, screw not knowing Church personally and what he has in his heart. So he so it was a racist term used by somebody else. So in fact, because you yourself, you use that you use you that, must be racist, right? Because at the time, Screw didn't know uh, who Up Church was as a person. Okay, but but still, anybody can fall into that category. Uh, absolutely, uh, you're absolutely right. I'm not discrediting that at all. Anybody can fall into that category. So he, this is my my problem: is you got angry over a a a, a racial epithet that, that was used by somebody to mock somebody else who used it in the fucking first place, but now you are correlating it with that fucking person because they fucking used it. But because the man has some kind of fucking fame, you're going to sit here and be like, oh, you're a racist, instead of attacking the original motherfucker who used it to fucking begin with. Right. Uh, and, it, and, uh, and My so other thing is, is, if you get so worked up over a fucking word, word. stop fucking using the fucking word then. Black people all the fucking time use this fucking particular racial epithet, and yet everybody and their fucking mother gets all fucking hooting and hollering when somebody else fucking uses it. But then, if you don't like the fucking word being said by other fucking people, don't fucking say it. Don't use it yourself. All right? But it has again, to end somewhere. Then again, like uh, like the little conversation we had when you were on your way here to, to uh, shoot this video. Yes. A lot of rappers out there use that term yes and a lot of their songs but nowadays when those rappers use that term in a song it doesn't it's not in a derogatory sense it's pretty much saying what up homie what up what up yeah you, uh, like, you know I, what i mean i get that but if it's you're saying that to one person of the same particular skin color as you and that's how you take it but then, all of a sudden, the word has changed in meaning when somebody of a different fucking skin tone says it to you. Then it's an issue. Then it's a fucking problem. Well, it, that, that sounds like you're trying to have your cake and you're fucking eating it, too. I agree. But also, uh, the argument could be made as well that using the hard R at the end of that particular term. It's the same shit. And not... Like, you know what I mean? To, to me, it's the same shit. You, you can't attack one man and not attack somebody else who you... Uh, no, I, I absolutely when agree. When the man's mocking somebody else for doing it. Exactly. I, I wholeheartedly agree with well, that. I don't, I don't want to get too far into that because that'll take up a whole goddamn show in its fucking self. Let, let, let's, let's get back to this. So, this is where he, he was getting the uh, assumption that he was racist. Right. Correct? All right. Later on in the interview... No, he, mind you, mind you that... That video has been around for a, uh, a while now. Yeah. And Upchurch has a lot of reaction, uh, people that react to his, his videos, whether it be black, whether it be white. He has a substantial... Hispanic. Hispanic. Uh, he has a substantial amount of black people that react to his shit and then have seen that video and just laughed at it like everybody else has. Yeah. S Simba, Mile High Floating, Saint Family. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but you can't, in my opinion, you can't sit here and say that. Because that's like saying, oh, one black person... I'm, I missed one. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Shaq. Yeah, no life Shaq yet. Uh, good man, actually. I, I like his videos. His videos are funny. That's funny. Um, but that you can't correlate one black man to another black man on how one black man sits here and sees the use of that word. Right. And I, you could make the argument, oh, because they're fans of church that they're willing to dismiss it. Right. So and you can't really make that argument, though. But then again, it's it's also the way I feel that you've been brought up and raised. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that one too. Yeah, because I will, I will concede to that. Yeah, I, and and I'm gonna throw like a little anecdote out there, and I know people might get a little mad in the comments or whatever. They already mad because I fucking said fuck roast and review, which <laughs> fuck y'all. I'll say it again. But when we grew up, mm. obviously we're white. Who's white? I don't know. Well, I am. I'm Hispanic. Well, you're partially 
I am not. No, my skin tone <laughs> may be lighter than most Hispanics, but I am Hispanic. I'm a racist ass piece of shit. See? <laughs> go ahead. Anyways, go ahead. See, right. but we've been boys since we were little, and we could fuck around that way. But anyway, when I grew up, or when we were growing up, mm. it was. Racism was there. There was. Yeah. But the way I was brought up by how my mama raised me, my grandfather raised me, I'm not a hateful person. And I was not raised around hate. I was not raised around hateful people. You, you, you know what? I mean, it's not about being raised around hateful people. I mean, it is to a certain extent. You're absolutely right. But it, to me, it's very much like Mr. Church sat here and said, what happens to a plant if you keep watering it? It grows. It grows, right? So what happens if you keep feeding the idea of, of that. racism or racism or gets this and that? It gets bigger and bigger. It gets and bigger. bigger and bigger. You want to know how you get rid of it? You stop fucking talking about it. That's how right. it goes away. All right? I'm so serious. That's legitimately how it fucking goes away. You start talking about it. Start giving it credence. Start giving it precedence. If it's not there, then it goes away. Out of sight, out of mind. It doesn't mean that shit has not happened in the past. Yeah, right? It has. It very much has. I mean, But it needs to stop. Also, Church brought up a, a good, uh, good point. Uh, obviously, he's white. I'm white. You know, uh, I've been... I've been called redneck. I've been called. You mean, you mean you're not? <laughs> I, I'm proud to say that I am, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. Go ahead. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I don't take that as a derogatory term. I don't take you know hillbilly as a derogatory term. But there are some people who do. But at the same time, yeah, there might be some people that do. But at the same time, you know, th there's so many names you could give white people. Like I said, redneck, hillbilly. Cracker, fucking whitey, whatever the fuck you wanna, you wanna use. But do I take offense to that? Did church take offense to that? No. But that's you too. Who says that other people don't? And, well, yeah, that that's a good point too. That there there are other people out there that could take offense to that. Correct. But seems the way that how me and him were brought up, it's not you know thick skin pretty much. Well, yeah, and, and that's very lacking in today's society, that thick skin to take a fucking head and keep moving. You know, it's just like, you know, someone, it's it's a name. You know, that old saying, sticks and stones, man, sticks and stones. That, that's not how today works. It, it, you know, you say a hurtful word and all of a sudden your life's fucking ending and you want to go and fucking commit suicide because somebody told you you're an asshole, you're a piece of shit. I mean, I get called an asshole all the time. By me. I take um, it as a compliment. You know, I, I will literally... Call him on the fucking phone. Hey, yo, piece of shit. Hurry the fuck up. We got shit to do. I mean, then again, you know, my uncle calls me or, he t or he'll send me a text like, hey, dickhead. I'm like, yeah. hey, uncle. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't get offended by now by but, someone calling me a, a, a certain name. But I can understand the point of view of someone that would get offended by that. Now, the one thing I will sit here and say that Screwface did bring up was that you may not sit here and get offended or you may not feel that anything was wrong with it, but sometimes it's not what you feel or what you see is how other people see things. I will give credence to that because it's what other people see it as. It's how it's viewed, what it looks like. There's very much a truth to that. Whether it may be true or not, how does it look to somebody else? That's very much a real thing. And it's very much, you know, a, a very psychological aspect to a lot of different people. You right. may not get offended. Somebody else will, though. No, how does somebody else see something? Absolutely. I, I, I agree. I get that. I get it. But you know what, though? How one person sits here and sees something, then you know what? Don't fucking watch it. You don't like it? Don't watch it. You don't agree with it? All right. Don't, oh, don't fucking sit here and, uh, you know, oh, I want to cancel this or fucking do all this other shit or whatever it may be because I personally feel offended. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, you live in America, yes? 
The land of the free? The land of the free. Guess what? In America, you are free to get offended. That's fine. But there's but also... But I am also fucking free to fucking offend. There's also freedom of speech. That's part of the freedom of speech. As long as no one's getting hurt or killing or dying because of it, no one cares. Did it happen at one point in time? Yes, yeah. but we're already maybe 200 years past that. All right? That, that's one thing I want to bring up, and I might get some shit for it, okay? And maybe you'll understand my point of view. I already don't get shit, so I don't give a fuck. Go ahead. Man, maybe you folks would understand what I'm trying to say here. Okay, uh, that derogatory term. Okay. This particular racial epithet. That, that, that particular racial term. Okay. Was used how long ago? Uh, yeah. But, uh, go ahead. I'll let you finish, though. Go ahead. Now, for those people... I'm, I'm talking to the young kids that use, use this... Uh, use this term and get offended when someone else uses this term. Talking to, talking to the young ones. Talking to the young bucks here. Why do you necessarily get offended? Why were you around at that time? You can't really make that correlation. Like, did, uh, did, did something really bad happen? You don't know. Exactly, you don't know. You don't know that. The one, the one thing that I really, you know, annoyed the shit out of me was uh, when both Roast and Screw were like, oh, well, you don't know what it's like to be pulled over at a traffic stop. Yeah, and I, I kind of... What the fuck does that fucking have to do with anything? You're feeding into the fucking shit at that point in time. And, and, and then even Church sat here and said, what are you fucking talking about? I live in the fucking South. I know exactly what it's fucking like to be pulled over in a traffic stop. Exactly. I mean, I could, I could give you an, an example. Driving to work one morning, I get pulled over. Now, I drove past this cop who was underneath his patrol car... Looking for something. I don't know what the fuck he was looking for. Okay. Drove past him. I was doing the speed limit. Speed limit is about 30, 35. Okay. Meanwhile, there was a tan a Toyota van that was doing at least 45, maybe 50. But at the time, I was still driving a black two-door car, sports car. Okay. So, cop automatically assumed that it was the sports car that was speeding, the two-door. Mm -hmm. Pulls me over, and he asked me, you know, same thing, license and registration, and I was pissed off because why the fuck are you pulling me over when I know for a fact I didn't do a goddamn thing wrong? Okay. So, I called him out on it. I said, officer, how did you see that I was the one speeding when you, when I passed you, you were underneath your patrol car looking for whatever the hell you were looking for? Okay. So, it, like, and he, and he was giving me shit. So it's not it's it's not like whether you're black or white, you still get fucked. You you still are shitting bricks when you're getting pulled over. Right. right. And, and and it's automatically a defense mechanism for when you do get pulled over, knowing for a fact in your mind that you knew you did absolutely nothing wrong. It's just a defense mechanism. I will reserve my opinions about law enforcement. I'll keep that to myself. All right, because that's a whole other episode. I mean, are there a lot of videos out there of police officers doing very bad shit to... That, that's a different story. We're, we're not going to get right. into that. Then no. Uh, and, uh, again, but, oh, you don't know what it's like to be pulled over by a, 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 on a traffic stop. Okay, well, what's the correlation between Mr. Church being pulled over in the traffic stop when he himself lives in the fucking South, and guess what? You're getting pulled over regardless. So, what's the difference? Why? Because one's a white guy and one's a black guy? Is that what, is that what the problem is? Again, you're going to make that correlation because I'm black and you're white, you don't know my struggles? Or you don't know what I go through? Or you don't know what I've been through? There is just as many struggles in white than black. There is... Just as many struggles on both sides of the fucking fence, no matter where you go. No and matter where you go. And just because you grew up around a particular set 
of people or culture or ideas that does not mean that's how the rest of the world works or how other people work. Mm -hmm. It's not the way it is. I mean, when I was a kid in elementary school, my first, uh, my first friend was, uh, um, Jamaican. Oh, yeah. Darian. I remember him. Okay. He was my first friend. And me and him were, me and him were tight. Me and him were so close. Right. I didn't, did, did I see color? No. But again, that, that's how we were raised. Exactly. And he got, he was getting picked on because of his skin color. But I'm the one that stepped in to put a stop to that. Because what, to me, skin color doesn't mean anything. No. If if you're okay with me, I'm okay with you. Uh, it, it just again, yeah, it's all sides of the fence. You know, everything is gonna wind up happening to somebody somewhere, some point, some shape, at some time. You, you you just can't lump everybody in together. Right. You can't make these kind of generalizations about everybody. But say la vie. Anyways. The, the, the point is, is that eventually they did come to an understanding. Yes. About uh, two and a half hours fucking later into the fucking video. But they got to an understanding, you know. Oh, uh, if I remember correctly, it was that Screw thought Church was dissing him by saying, Oh, who is that? When yeah. the Roast and Review crew brought it up in an interview, right? Right. But and, that and, wasn't and, the case, was it? No, and it's funny too because... The guys at Roast and Review said, hey, you know, I'm going to stir the pot right now. That's how that started off. Well, uh, again, you know, they're, they're, but yes. they're doing their job for views. Right. Let, let, let's get that on the straight. You know, they're doing their job for views or whatever it may be, so they can get the little clicks and whatever it may be. But yes, uh, an understanding was made. It was a misunderstanding on Screw's behalf. It happens. It, it, it happens. Right. And also, church, and we went over this in uh, the last video we made talking about, you know, the, 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 this whole thing. Church comes into contact with, with thousands, maybe millions of people a day, you know, reacting to his stuff, commenting, yeah. so forth and what, what have you. The man is only fucking human. You know, he can't remember Everyone's every name. single fucking person. No. I mean, I know I can. I even said in, the, in, the, in our last video, I'm fucking terrible with dates. I'm terrible with names. No, exactly. It, it does It does happen. If I give you a nickname, I'll probably fucking remember it. <laughs> but... It happens. You know, you know it, it, happen. it happens. You know, and when they asked him, uh, in, you know, they asked him about Screw, he assumed, uh, he thought that it was... The seventy six dude that fucking what's his name Skippy or Scanner or, or Scammer or whatever. We'll call him Skippy. I, I, I guess his fucking name is Skippy. I don't know. <laughs> the kid, the kid has like the same amount of fucking subscribers that we have. So I, I don't even know what the fuck his name is. So yeah, just so they asked him about that, and Church thought he was. They were talking about that, uh, that kid. Yeah. It happens. Y y you know. You know, and it wasn't like Church was. Intentionally, uh, trying to diss uh, screw. It was a misunderstanding on both ends. It happens. It happens. It, it, but it, did it did uh, did that misunderstanding on screw's end uh, deem a diss track for this the whole thing to start? I don't think so. You could have just messaged a man on Instagram or however and say, "Hey, man, you know uh, what was this all about?" Yeah. Could have just had a conversation. You know, and, you know, and... It, it, to me, you're flying... It was all about flying off the handle. Right. Or whatever it may be. And, oh, you know what? I felt he dissed me, so I got to come out with a diss track that was completely and totally... And, and totally wrong in every fucking retrospect. But... But even, even Screw said it himself in uh, the Roast and Review uh, interview. Hmm. That Screw learned more about Church through this whole fucking thing than he was led to put on okay you want to know how you can also do that you fucking talk to the fucking man right oh okay you you, you want to learn more about somebody through something whatever 
talk to the fucking dude for a, a message. Hey, was that about me or not? All right, if it was, okay, fuck you. Now we we can do diss tracks right. or whatever it may be. But but if, if you would have but if he if you would have messaged, all this uh, could have been avoided if if he would act like a fucking adult. All of it could have been fucking avoided. And I went on Mr. Screwface's channel, and one of the, the videos that is like a welcome to a new fucking thing, right, right is a, a video of somebody speaking, saying that, oh, 2009, and we're going to bring back, you know, clout chasing, and, uh, you know, take away the stigma of it, of it away. Interesting. So, was this all pre-planned and pre-thought of? Whatever, I don't fucking know, nor do I really care. It could have been prevented, but it wasn't, so here we are now. And you learn something, everybody learns something. I'm sure Mr. Church learned something about you and you learned something about him. Alright? But I'm getting back to the main motherfucking fact. It took two and a half hours for Mr. Church and Screw to get to, you an, know, understanding. to an understanding. Well, and, and the first half of the of the interview, it was just it, 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 they, were, they were just butting heads. It, it, in, in it, the it was screw talking over Mr. Church. It was the the, the two guys talking the, over the, the, the roast and review talking over Mr. Fucking Church, and then to me it seemed again this is just to me it seemed that Mr. Roast, whatever his fucking name is, was more on screw side half the fucking time about anything else. Oh, oh, well, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan! You gotta understand. You gotta understand. First things first, you don't know the fucking man. I always refer to Ryan Upchurch as Mr. Church because I don't fucking know the dude. I don't know the dude's fucking last name. Or do I fucking know anything about him? So as a sign of respect to me, it's always Mr. Church. You're talking to him like your fucking friends. I mean, I wouldn't call him by Ryan. You know, no. I, you know, I'd call, I, I call, I call him, I call him Church. So again... As a sign of respect, you want to be professional, you're holding an interview, right? right? Where you're supposed to be mediating and moderating the entire fucking thing, which you guys did fucking horrible at, all right? So, God, the only thing you guys fucking did was fucking good that you fucking did was put two people in the fucking same room to fucking sit here and fucking talk it out. So, I'll give you a fucking, you know, accommodation for that one. And, and, right? and hopefully, the you know, if they bury, you know, church and screw bury the hatchet. I, I think it will. I, 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 think, I, I think there was that, that was like the only... Positive that came out of that mm. was maybe again you put two people in the same room they're gonna eventually see eye to eye right you know and like we've mentioned uh, already that they did you know they came to an understanding and hopefully Screw has learned who Upchurch is as a person more than he did in the beginning okay. because Screw has said it himself mm. he didn't know much about church. Aside from what he's seen on social media and what he's Googled. Mm, yeah, you can fucking Google what you fucking want, whatever. Just oh, because it's, on the, it's on the internet, it must be true. It, just because you fucking read something on the internet don't make it fucking true at all. Whatever. Anyways, um... But yes. And, and, and you know, hopefully Mr. Church has learned more about Mr. Screw, you know, in this whole entire thing. That they now have, you know, gained some form of a mutual respect for each other, which I don't see why they wouldn't. Nor do I see Mr. Church not doing that. No, because uh, Church is an upstanding guy. No. The, but the other thing was that, you know, Mr. Church sits here and views the same thing that I view, that these guys totally didn't fucking do what they're fucking supposed to. No. Like, he fucking sat here and put it on his fucking Instagram story. He even stated that he is no longer going to appear on Roast and Review. Because of the simple fact... That they didn't do their goddamn job. This was a one-sided conversation with Mr. Screw talking to Mr. Church. And Mr. Church not being able to barely fucking defend himself for fucking anything. Or felt these two fucking morons jumping in on Mr. Screw's side to fucking talk to Mr. Church. And I, I wouldn't... I'll say that uh, the Rosen Review guys were lighting the fire more... They were in it for themselves. Right. And, I mean, let, let's be honest. I mean, all YouTube is all about igniting shit, getting, getting the viewership. Me, 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 me. I get it. I get it. I understand it. But for a man who's been pretty much on your guys' side 
for a while now, from what I understand and from what I see, I could be wrong. Keyword, I could be wrong from what I see. He's been on the show plenty of times, and he's had you guys back plenty of times. You did wrong by the man. You did. You did wrong by the man. You owe that man a fucking apology. Church was more prepared for an interview. Church had a notebook full of shit that he wanted to discuss and bullet points that he wanted to bring up. Bring up as per this uh, beef. But it was, a, it was an interview. He's got topics and discussion points. He wants to talk no, about. no questions were even fucking asked. No, no questions were asked. And on, it, on, on, on Roast and Review's end. On uh, Roast and Review's end, there was, there was no, no questions. No, you know who was asking more questions? Mr. Screw was asking Mr. Church more fucking questions than these two were. Right. The man that is sitting here supposed to be having an interview. The interviewee is asking another interviewee questions. Where the fuck does that make sense? I'm going to throw that out there. Church, you don't want to be on Roast and Review anymore? Come on our show, man. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, we'll have him over here somewhere. I'm more like, than welcome. More on, than welcome. On the on, on the Skype machine over here somewhere. I'm saying more than welcome. Come on. All right. You know, if anybody sees this, throw this out there, let them know. You know, you come and speak to us. All right, we'll treat you a little bit more fairly. All right. I may not may always be on your side. He may be. I I'm not always gonna be on your side, but I'll treat you fucking fairly. But the th the thing with churches also is that he calls it like he sees it. And that's what you're supposed to do. Exactly. That's the way. That's the way I see things. You call it like you see it. All right. You take the emotions out of fucking things and you stick with straight fucking facts because facts do not give a fucking shit about your goddamn fucking feelings and your fucking emotions. Facts don't lie. Okay. Facts do not care about your fucking mental state or your fucking emotional state or how you fucking feel. Nope. Facts do not give a fuck. Whatever. But at the end of the day, they came to an understanding, which is great. Absolutely phenomenal. It was good. It, 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 it's good in that, in that aspect. They, they, they traded songs. It was like four songs apiece, if I remember correctly. Right. And uh, they did good. It, 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 you know, this whole thing is buried on the hatchet. And also, to the people who donated money to Roast and Review... Church has got your back. Dude. Yeah, he, he put it on the Instagram story at Mr. Simba TV. And what's his other name? Mile High Floating. Mile High Floater? Floating. Floating. Mile High Floating. Uh, try and, you know, contact uh, some the people. of these people and you're going to get your money back whether you want to or not. Right. You know. And that's how much of an upstanding guy Church really fucking I is. I don't view that as being as upstanding. I view that as the man was fucking pissed. Oh, he has every right to be pissed. I know, and he has fucking... And the man was fucking pissed. So you sat here and you donated to this fucking show, which, look, you you can do whatever you want with your money. That's your fucking prerogative, not mine. I don't give a fuck, whatever. Who cares? But the man's going to give you your money back, or he wants to give you your money back. And also look at it this way. Look how many of Upchurch fans went to the Roast and Review page. Same thing with Screws fans. How, how many of both sides... Went to the Roast and Review page to watch this fucking... These two gentlemen sat here and brought these people so many fucking views in one fucking shot. Mm -hmm. You know, and you dropped the ball. Yeah. It was bad. You dropped the ball. Whatever. That look, that's our thoughts. That's our uh, feelings towards this thing. You know, uh, this is how we're viewing it. Uh, side note. Okay, we, I, we want to give an apology for uh, a the, certain a certain somebody yeah. fucking up the order of the uh, the diss tracks. Yes, that was me because I just wanted to get to the point. We, yeah, it, it was more of a, to the gist of it. Right to the uh, you know it 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 did, it did happen. So but, everybody uh, that commented down on that, that's my bad. My bad. All right. So if you were speaking to me directly, you know you were speaking to me directly. All right. It is what it is. Um, I do want to give a special thanks to uh, Mr. Daxter. Okay. Yes. 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 I, I do want to give a special thanks to that man. 
first thing, upstanding guy. You know, I was having a whole conversation with him. He uh, actually does run a uh, Discord for Upchurch fans. I which I which I seen. Yeah, uh, I actually went to it and I had a uh, a long conversation with him uh, on his uh, Discord. He's a very nice guy, and then also at the same time he actually uh, transcribes lyrics for uh, artists onto I, I believe. Their their page, or he writes down the lyrics to their songs. If anybody's looking for them, or, you know you can ask him directly. I'll leave a link down to uh, his channel over there, and he'll and I'll take the the Discord, and he'll sit here and help you out. Very nice guy. Good. I I really like him. But uh, to all the fans out there, you know. Oh, well, and a couple ahead, couple, ahead, couple ahead. things. Mm -hmm. We made an Instagram for uh, for our page uh, for uh, our YouTube here. So Pop Culture Ant TV, it's there. You on can, the Instagram. And and if you can do this, we'll put the link to... Yeah, I'll put it somewhere. Right, right up there. I'll figure it the fuck right out. Right down there. And also, uh, you want to have a conversation with uh, either one of us, you could go to our, that, uh, our Culture Rent Instagram page. If you want to talk, uh, find find me at, on Instagram at uh, Eddie Winchester. You, you you can sit here and speak to us put on, it right down there somewhere. on the Twitter machine of at rent underscore pop or even just leave a comment down below. I mean, down below. Look, for the most part, we do answer every single comment or at least, you know, we try to answer every right. single comment. And we'll have a conversation with you. I have no fucking problem talking to anybody. It don't bother me at all. All right. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. All right. And uh, again, church. We got a spot for you right here, brother. <laughs> right there. Come on. Oh, okay. Come on the show. All right, you motherfuckers stay beautiful. And uh, as always, you know I love you. All right, I'll see you guys later.